I am a fairy godmother. And I'm a Halloween lady. <laughs> and today we are going to give you our 13 best practically perfect Halloween tips for a fun and organized Halloween. And healthy and safe. <laughs> okay, healthy-ish. Okay, number okay. one, let's talk costumes. Let's talk costumes. They're always fun. Our first tip is shop your own closet and your kids dress up. Yeah, just get creative. You don't have to spend money to have an awesome costume. That's right. Tip number two is ask around. Borrow things from friends and family and these <laughs> items are borrowed from Kit's daughter, as is this. <laughs> tip number three is to shop your local thrift shops. This treasure was found by Kit and I, what, four years ago? Four years ago at an amazing thrift shop. It, it was, was really fun. fun. And tip number four is don't buy your costume too soon, which seems a little bit counterintuitive for those of us who like to plan ahead. Why wouldn't you buy it soon? Thank I you. feel like the sooner, the cheaper, right? I'm glad you asked. So I thought that, and one year my family was at Costco, early September, and I let all three of the kids pick their Halloween costumes. And by October, they had all changed oh. their minds about what they wanted to be, and it was Meltdown City the whole <laughs> month of October. <laughs> so now my new rule is we don't buy costumes till October 1st mm. and or just until we're sure. But don't wait too late because if you do and you are planning on purchasing a costume, that's when they get really expensive and the selection is. If you wait too late, see tips number one, two, <laughs> and three. Exactly. <laughs> this is tip number five. Are you ready? Excuse me, I'm just finishing my candy. Mm -hmm. Candy, buy early. Buy it, just hide it. But then don't forget that you bought it. Don't get stuck buying it the night of. Tip number six mm -hmm. is have some non-candy options to give out to trick-or-treaters. Yeah. And you can also get a teal pumpkin mm -hmm. to put out in front of your house. And that will indicate to trick-or-treaters if you're offering a non-food option at your yes. house. And some ideas for things might be pencils or stickers. You need to borrow this? Pencils, stickers, <laughs> removable tattoos, any kind of little trinkets or treasures that are non-edible. And if you want to be the coolest house on the block, you can hand out little dental kits like my dad did when we were growing up. I love that idea. He was a dentist and you would come get a little preset pack of a toothbrush, a toothpaste, and those little, I don't know what they're called, they're these little tabs that you eat and it makes all the tartar on your teeth turn red. Oh, most so popular house on the block over here. <laughs> Tip number seven is to think about the quantity of candy that's coming into your home and your life. Or that you're going to allow your kids to keep afterwards, yes. right? Yes. So a um, trick that Kit and I both use is to provide our kids with a jar or a container of some sort and they know that when they get home and they've had the chance to dump their candy and sort it, which is the most fun part of the Halloween, part. that they can collect a certain amount in their jar. It has an added benefit, for my kids at least, that they will know if pieces are missing. So what to do with all of the extra candy? So I have three suggestions for this. Our dentist here in LA is awesome, and she takes back all of the candy and gives the kids a dollar a pound to turn their candy in. My kids love this, they go get their money, and maybe they buy themselves something or stash it away in their piggy bank. Another opportunity is my children's kindergarten teacher used to collect all of the candy and mail it to the troops. I love that idea as well. And tip number three, I haven't tried this. Have you, Kit, the Switch I have, Witch? I did try it one year. My son okay. really is. So the Switch Witch. And that the idea is, is that your kids will give all of their candy in exchange for a gift of some sort. Three different ways to get rid of your candy, which brings us to tip number nine, which is to set candy expectations for your kids. So if you plan to let them keep only an edited amount of what they collect, let them know in advance, right? Talk about this ahead of time. It's gonna be really disappointing when they come back with a big bag only to learn that they're not gonna keep it all, as opposed to when they're trick-or-treating and they can think to themselves, ooh, that's, that's gonna be a keeper or I'm probably, that one's probably not gonna make the cut. <laughs> At the end of the day, do what's practical for you. Just make sure your kids know what that's gonna be. Okay, we talked about costumes, we talked about candy. Now we're going to talk about caution. These are the three C's of Halloween. <laughs> caution equals safety. Equals fun. <laughs> Just like the candy talk, you're gonna have a safety talk in advance. And you just wanna make sure, again, expectations are set. This is very neighborhood specific and it's family specific, but if you have specific rules about where your kids can and can't run off to without you, talk about it in advance, make sure everyone's on the same page. There's a buddy system in place if you have a grown-up at the front and a grown-up at the back of the group, whatever your plans that you have in place are. Which reminds me that tip 10. Yes, tip 10, a light source for the kids, be that a glow stick, flashlight, bracelet, whatever floats your boat. So I love glow sticks. You know, that's really pretty when oh, it goes thank you. your costume. Thank you. 
Just make sure all the kids have a light source. It's fun for them. They are gonna want them anyway. I love it. Okay, and tip 11 is about cell phones. Take pictures in advance, and I know kids are dying to get out the door to go trick-or-treating, but as soon as they get their costumes on, take some great photographs, because when you're out and about trick-or-treating, it's really helpful to be able to pocket your cell phone and be more present with the kids. Um, which actually brings us to tip number 12, which is somewhere that you might stash your cell phone. We highly recommend um, as moms to bring some kind of a bag or a backpack. I can't tell you how many times I have walked down the street carrying these, Hold this. these type Hold of this items. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, something just to stash away. I also typically tend to bring a bottle of water for my fam. I feel like everybody gets pretty thirsty from all the candy tasting. Um, so yeah, just grab a backpack, bottle of water, somewhere to store all the things that your kids will inevitably shed and hand to you. <laughs> Which and brings us to the number last thirteen. Time. Lucky number thirteen is to have fun. That's what Halloween is all about, and we want to make sure that you and your family are having a very happy and safe Halloween. Yes, and we wish you many beautiful memories this Halloween. And as always, if it's practical for you, it's perfect for you. Happy Halloween! <laughs> By the way, this I should always have this with me. Now you know what to do with your hands. I'm like feeling like I have nothing to do with my hands. Oh, well. Ha, 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 ha.